next, let's take a look at our the accounting treatment for debt investments classified as trading. Remember, these are the instruments that management determines we're going to actively be selling. We're probably going to only hold on to them for hours to days. Um, typically, this is going to be done by financial institutions, not non-financial corporations. And when the debt investments are classified as trading, when they're going to be sold very frequently, those fair values become much more relevant or interesting to investors. So these debt investments classified as trading are going to be reported at fair value on the balance sheet. Changes in fair values, remember, are going to go into net income. So at the end of each period, we're going to have two entries. We record that regular entry for interest that we receive, regardless of the classification of the debt investment, we're going to have that entry for interest revenue. But in addition, we're also going to have an adjusting entry for a change in fair value over the period. Now, one thing we need to know is that when the fair value changes, we don't directly increase the value or decrease the value of the debt investment. We do not directly adjust, increase, or decrease the investment in bonds account. We use a separate account, a valuation account. A separate or valuation account called fair value adjustment. to record changes in fair value. We've seen se several valuation accounts over the course of financial accounting courses. Allowance for doubtful accounts is a valuation account that captures how much of our accounts receivable do we think we're not going to collect. We have accumulated depreciation is a valuation account that captures what's the total amount of depreciation expense that's ever been recorded on our buildings and equipment. We have a valuation account called treasury stock. Instead of reducing our common stock when we buy back our common stock, we record it in the account treasury stock. And here we have another valuation account. The difference between the three examples I just gave and this valuation account, the other ones were all contra accounts. The fair value adjustment is another example of a um, adjunct account. It the fair value adjustment account, it acts like a, an, an asset. And that's a simple way of saying it carries a, a normal balance is a debit. So if, the, if there's an increase in fair value for the investment security, we want to debit the fair value adjustment account. And of course, if there's a decrease in fair value of this investment in bonds, we want to credit to decrease the fair value adjustment account. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's look back at our example one, where we have set company issues 700,000 12% three year semi annual bonds on July 1st for $666.634. Market rate on similar bonds is 14%. We can write these entries over if you'd like. Pause here, write them over if that helps to get in the notes, but the entries are going to look exactly the same. 
regardless of whether it was held to maturity or a trading bond. Um, here, our bonds are classified, bond investment classified as trading. We record the purchase on July 1st, debit investment in bond, 700,000, credit the cash paid, 666, 634, and credit the difference to discount on bond investments, 33, 367. Six months goes by, December 31st, it's a cash receipt date. Uh, in the interest receipt date, we get cash based on the bond's face value and stated rate, 42,000. We record interest revenue, the beginning carrying value, 666, 634, multiplied by the market rate. And we get interest revenue, 46, 664. The difference between the cash and the interest receipt revenue that we're recording is the decrease to the discount on the bond investment, 4,664. On December 31st, 2024, we have investment of bonds, 700,000 minus the balance in the discount account. It started off as 33,367. We decreased it, 4,664, and we get a balance of 28,703. We have an amortized cost of 671,279. So I'm gonna start there with writing out what my amortized cost is. Example one, but now we have a trading security. So we have my bond investment, 700,000. This is at 1231.24, less the balance in the discount, which is at this point, 28.703. This gives us carrying value, or what we're now calling amortized cost, of 671.297. This is where held to maturity security. That's it. This is what goes on the balance sheet, but it's not. It's a trading security. So we need to know about fair value. All right, assume fair value on December 31st. And now this is a market price. So you'd have to, in this class, you'd have to be given it. We're not going to value bonds that would be or bond investments that would be for a finance class assume this is trading at 714.943 on 12.31 so we are tracking the amortized cost but in addition to that we need a separate journal entry we're going to take the difference between the fair value I always start with my fair value first subtract out my amortized cost. And if this amount here is positive, then we see that there was an unrealized gain. My amortized cost right here, 671, 297. And this difference is 43,646. So we need to have a balance in the fair value adjustment account so this is, would be our required ending balance in the fair value adjustment account. Now, since this is the very first period that we uh, we're recording an adjustment to the fair value, this is also going to be the journal entry amount because we're starting with a beginning balance in the fair value adjustment account of zero. And December 31st is the first end of a period where we have this inst financial instrument. So then let's increase for the adjusting entry amount. To get the balance needed, this is the required ending balance or the ending balance in the fair value adjustment that we need. Okay, so when it's the first period, the amount that we need is of course the amount of the entry. But this is our journal entry. Next period, in six months when we do this again, we're gonna have a beginning balance of 43,646, but for now, the amount of our required ending balance is the amount of our journal entry. We can think of it like this with T accounts. We have our investment in bonds. 
This is an asset, so it has, carries the 700,000 debit balance. We have a discount on investment and bonds. That carries a credit balance of 28703, right? Put these together, we have our amortized cost of 671,279. And now we're adding another account related to these bonds, the fair value adjustment account. And we want an ending balance in the fair value adjustment account. We want the ending balance to be 43,646. We want it to be a debit because the fair value is higher than the amortized cost. cost. We're trying to increase the value of this investment, but not directly to the investment in bonds account. So we need to record an entry to increase fair value adjustment by 43,646. This is going to be the amount of our entry, our adjusting entry. Okay, so this entry to record the increase in fair value. I debit to increase fair value adjustment. Now, if my fair value had been below amortized cost, I'd have to credit to reduce the investment in bonds account. Okay, this was easy because we had no beginning balance and fair value adjustment. And then what's the other side of this entry? Well, we said, so this, this fair value adjustment account, let's write, let's make sure we note this, this is a balance sheet account. And a debit increases assets. It's not clear just looking at this account title that it goes on the balance sheet and what a debit means. So we have to remember this. What account are we going to credit? Okay, so this affects, this increases our investment on the balance sheet. We also want to show that net income increases because remember we said we report on the trading classification, we report the investment at fair value on the balance sheet, and then unrealized gains and losses increase net income. And the specific account that we're going to credit is called gain on investment. And then in parentheses, we're going to show that it's unrealized, comma, net income. It goes into income. Well, where else would it go? We'll see. Not in the trading classification. When we get to available for sale, we'll see that unrealized gains on investment don't go into net income. They're going to go into OCI. But for now, we're showing that this is an unrealized gain and it's going to be reported as part of net income. Now, more commonly, I'll see a title here called unrealized holding gains and losses, and then we'll put dash net income. But this is what our textbook publisher is going to use. This account gain on investment, parentheses, unrealized net income. Okay, and so this account, this is the income statement account. And a credit equals a gain, and a debit would equal the account loss on investment, unrealized net income. So what would be reported? Remember, this entry was reported. Let me put that in. Entry to record the increase in fair value. The entry is reported on 12-31-24. What would the financial statements record? This should be pretty easy. The 2024 income statement would report interest revenue, 46664. This was equal to our beginning carrying value of the bond investment times the market rate times six out of 12. And we would also report an income, the gain on bond investment of 43646. So just on these two things, just if all we have is this debt investment, Net income for the period is 90,310. Could this have been a loss? Of course, if the fair value had gone down, we could this interest revenue would be offset by a loss on bond investment. Okay, and then the balance sheet at 1231.24, what would it report? I mean, probably just report the uh, bond investment at 700 and 
and that's it. But if we drilled down into that asset, into that asset account, what we would see, or if we looked at the general ledger, we would see the bond investment at 700,000 plus the discount. We have a discount in the amount of 28,703. And we have the fair value adjustment account, which has a balance of 43,646. And what we would have is the bond investment, including our adjustments. And this should get us to the fair value.